Hello, today the subject is how to invest in the stock market. Yeah, with all time high, it's a good market to make money in. That's why. So let's dive into how to make money in the stock market, how to invest in it, and let's get to it, okay? Did you know that basically the stock market has an average annual, annual return of around 10% over the past century? 10%, okay? If you can do over 10% gains on your portfolio each year, you're basically about 1% of the people because most people go to the market and they lose it. Why? Because of the sharks. That's why. Now, what is the stock market? Okay, let, let me explain to you what is the stock market. The stock market, in essence, is like a bank, okay? I'm a company. I own a landscaping company. So we're going to call my company XYZ for teaching purposes. Okay, I'm XYZ. I need a, for a now, nice round figure, $100, to invest in my company, to buy machinery, to hire people, to open up an office, to buy vehicles. So I need $100 to do all that. Of course, we know that that's not even within it practical to be able to do that with $100, but this is for a nice round figure that I can teach from. So I go to the market, I go to the stock market, I put my stock on for trading. And the reason companies do that is basically to finance their operation. So it's cheaper for them to do that than to go to the bank and borrow it many times. They're giving up their, a part of their company but in the ends, what they're gaining is the finance that they need for it to be a multi-billion dollar corporation. So they go there for finances. So that's what really the stock market is. And people like us, re retail investors, we go there to basically see our money grow. Now, is it always a good deal? No. Really, honestly, this deck is stacked against us because the commercials are in the know and they are the ones who really make the money. So basically the potential benefit of investing in the stock market, such as long-term wealth building and beating inflation. Many times you can beat inflation. And it's, you know, like Warren Buffett, has done it over and over and over again. And many times you can invest in funds that do have a higher gains than just an individual stock. But before you even go there, what you need, need to really do is determine your investment goals and also setting financial goals, such as what do you want to do? Do you want to set up a fund for retirement? Do you want to set up for your children education? Do you want to set, set up a fund to buy a house? So you have to determine your investment goals before you in, even invest. Do you want an IRA for basically your retirement plan? There's a lot of ways to do it, but you also need to figure out what are the risk tolerance that you have. And many times I'll tell you folks, if you cannot sleep at night, and more or less like see your stocks go down and not be able to sleep at night, don't ever invest in something like that, okay? That means you're in too big and too much. And, you know, you can go into the market being conservative, being moderate, or being aggressive. But if you're gonna go in aggressive, that means you're high risk and you better know what you're doing. Am, am I, I'm a trader. I'm looking for short-term gains, 
but I'm also an investor. I'm looking for long-term gains. And when I hold it for long-term gains, I'm looking for a huge return. And for a trader, I'm looking for income. Small gains consistently, okay, is what I'm looking for as a trader. You also have to choose an investment strategy. You know, you can passive income investing. You know, I think one of the best ways I've ever done to make money was basically my stocks I have. I've got them in a brokerage house and I lease them. And that's providing me with staying power and also income till the stock I own develop into the story the thesis that I bought it for. And also you have to be able to read and stay attuned to that. You cannot trust a broker. A broker handles so many people at so much time. He's out there, he has a job. He works for the brokerage house. He doesn't work for you. You think he works for you, but he doesn't. He's a broker. What is a broker? A broker is somebody who becomes the middleman for the buyer and the seller. And the buyer, the seller, that's a broker, okay? So just start investing. The way you do it is you have to open up a brokerage account and there's like E-Trade, which is now owned by Morgan Stanley. There's also Charles Schwab. There's also Fidelity. And I'll be honest with, with you, I have had all three. And your marriage trade was bought out by Charles Schwab. And I think E-Trade is good. I think Charles Schwab is good. But I think Fidelity is first class treatment. I mean, they treat me well, possibly the best I've ever been treated. And they are the ones who basically told me about the leasing program. I could lease my stock and make money. And to be honest with you, that's a sigh of relief because when my stocks are going down, I'm making money. When my stocks are going up, I'm making money. I'm consistently making an income from that. Could I live on it? Yeah, yeah. In my retirement age, I'm 69 year, years old. That adds to my Social Security. So... You know, you can also go with what Warren Buffett likes, index fund. Some people like those, okay? But you always have to manage your risk, not what the brokerage want to assign you with, but what are you willing to tolerate? Can you sleep with night, okay? Now, I wanna say this to you. You need to set realistic goals. My son came to me last week and he said, Dad, can I take $100 and turn it into uh, $30,000 by the end of the month? I said, I thought about it for a moment. I said, sure, son, you could do that. But you're going to have to go with high risk, such as option trading and you better well know what you're doing. He said, well, I'm not doing it. I was just approached with that question and I wanted to hear what you had to say. I said, oh, okay, that's it. Now, it's all up to you. You can start with a, as little as $50, $100, but just start somewhere, get involved. And uh, cryptos are great tool too. I could have bought it for $3, but I was trading it. I was not, I never knew what it was going to do. So, but also you got to remember it. There's no intrinsic value with Bitcoin. I know I may get some hate mail on that. The only value that has basically is the value that people keep buying it, driving the price up. Okay. It has no historical, uh, foundation. Whereas like gold, they say Bitcoin is digital gold. Well, no, it's not folks. You may think it is, but it's not. And the reason it's not is because it's a technology. It's technology. It's technology. You cannot take a Bitcoin and put it away 
and 10 years later come back to it and you could sell it. Bitcoin you can put it away and it would be maybe out of circulation. You just never know. Or it could be the hottest ticket in the world. You could be a multimillionaire. You just don't know. It's, in other words, it's high risk. It's high risk. So if you want high risk, if you are in that game, buy it by all means. But beware, 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 buyer beware. So I just wanted to share those things with you. And uh, please like, please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.